Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and today we are going to be doing our very first viewer requested video. Every Friday, right here on the American Analyst channel, I will be taking your suggestions for content that I should cover, and I will be doing just that. So today we are doing from the Wall Street Journal a Bloomberg Business Manifesto. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is an opinion piece from the Wall Street Journal, and I think it's important to note uh, this was written, let's see here, on the 24th of February, so about two weeks ago. So with the benefit of hindsight, we are going to go through this. And basically, he is writing, he being the writer, he's writing as Michael Bloomberg, like what Michael Bloomberg should say to other members of the Democratic uh, race. And at this time, uh, Klobuchar, Warren, and Buttigieg were all still in the race. So let's get into it. To Bernie Sanders, again, so this is what Bloomberg should say to Bernie Sanders. To Bernie Sanders, you have not said one positive word about business. Well, that would be because he's a socialist. <laughs> um, why would he? Why would he is the first thing. To you, profits are, quote, obscene or, or equal, quote, greed. In the real world, men and women in business earn profits when they offer a good service, a good or a service at a price other, others are willing to pay. That's true, but that can still be exploited. Just because you're willing to pay a price does not make it a fair price. Do you see what I'm saying? Deceptive marketing happens all the time. So I could be willing to pay $10 for an apple when its actual value would be $2. And a fair value to sell it at might be 3 So I, I, I don't think this is his strongest argument. No one forces you to buy their products. That's true. It, well, at least not in the United States. And thinking of it as a Bernie supporter, or from a Bernie supporter's perspective, I am not a Bernie supporter, they would say, health care they force you to purchase because you have to live a big difference with no one forces you to buy their products a big difference with Medicare for all which would force many people to drop their private insurance they are happy with what gives any politician the moral authority to make this choice for them that's a good point but it's kind of uh, what would you say um, it's kind of convoluted so he's saying you know no one forces you to buy their products. And also, by the way, you shouldn't kick people off insurance. That's that's the sum of that point. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. In the last debate, you said my workers have something to do with the success of my company. Indeed, they do. Any business leader, from a bodega owner to a Fortune 500 CEO, uh, I like that. If you were Mike Bloomberg, you know, kind of throwing some shade in or uh, flexing a little bit will tell you his greatest challenge is to attract and retain good people. I don't know anyone, whether he has 15 or 15,000 employees, who doesn't go to bed each night aware of how many hardworking families depend on the success of his business for their place in the American dream. I think that's an excellent point. Excellent, excellent point. That, of course, of course, workers help people make profits you can't really unless you know you're a single person operation unless you own and operate your business your workers help you of course they do that also doesn't mean that they are entitled to a share of the profit meaning this if you pay someone $15 an hour to work the cashier of a small store you started should they be entitled to the profits of that store well, not perhaps if they agreed to it in advance, said, hey, you know, give me 5% of the store along with 15 an hour. That, of course, would be perfectly fine. But just hiring someone does not entitle them to some of those profits because they have not incurred any of the risk in opening that business. 
there's a lot of risk that is involved, which is solely taken on by the owner. The person who's working the cashier, and nothing against cashiers, uh, uh, obviously, but they don't incur any of the risk. In fact, many employees, does it could be many salaried employees is what I'm trying to say, like higher level employees, do not incur risk. If a business goes under and you're a manager in the business, you can put on your resume managerial experience. It doesn't void your experience because a business went under that you were a manager within. So if anything, they have less risk by working uh, at a company like that. <clears throat> so to Joe Biden, you keep saying I am a Republican. True. Oh, I see. Okay, this is the next part. I, was, I thought he was conceding. Like, oh, you keep saying I'm a Republican. Well, I am. Uh, no. True, I, I first ran for mayor of New York as a Republican, but Reagan started out as a New Deal Democrat. Excellent point. On goals central to the Democratic Party, weaning the economy off fossil fuels, mm -hmm. passing gun safety laws, making college affordable, ensuring universal health coverage, I count myself as progressive as anyone in this race. The difference is, I know you have to pay for things you want, not just wish for them. I think that is a criticism. Um, I think that's a criticism more applicable to Bernie, in particular, than to Biden. Uh, as mayor, I turned a $4.7 billion deficit into a $2.4 billion surplus. I simply could not have done it without a vibrant, growing economy. To Elizabeth Warren. Unlike Bernie, you at least call yourself a capitalist, but at its heart, your philosophy is the same. You said the party needs a candidate who can actually get something done. With all due respect, I'm a man who created thousands of jobs. I started my company after I was laid off at the age of 39, and I have no idea what to do next. I believe Democrats need to work for a society where... The opportunity to take risk and become wealthy is there for every American. Okay. 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 To Pete Buttigieg. You say we are having a debate over capitalism and socialism because, and I quote, capitalism has let a lot of people down. This may, <laughs> this would have been a, this would have been something good to say. Not necessarily, not necessarily to Pete, but again, to Bernie. This may sound clever at a Harvard seminar. But is it true? Look at your own town. Can you really say the ills that affect South Bend, Indiana, and the fall and fall heaviest on the African American community are because capitalism has let them down? Or might it be? I, yeah, they would say yes. That's a dumb thing to ask because that's putting the argument in their terms. So that's I, I, that's a really dumb question to ask. Are you saying that all these problems are because of capitalism? Well, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. So, no. Are, because capitalism has let them down, or might it be their own government has let them down? Uh, slightly, slight shade towards Pete. All right, moving on to last bit. Amy Klobuchar, to your credit, you call yourself capitalist. In the last debate, you also noted that the post-it note was created in your state. But let me ask you, where in our party do you hear the celebration of business that raise our standard of living and give hope for a better tomorrow? Okay. So the crux of this argument, or, or all of his arguments, I should say, is basically a defense of capitalism, is that Bloomberg should have defended capitalism. I agree. He spent the both debates just apologizing the whole time. That's all he did. And again, this would this is more of um, in how, how to win an argument as opposed to, like, um, his particular positions. He kept framing he kept letting his opponents put him in situations where he was responding to them as opposed to vice versa i would have done exactly well not exactly but pretty much what this person did in saying that hey what do you say to women who you know were working for you and said you were rude i would have said they could have left at any time they could have left at any time i don't force people to work there unlike socialism there, there you go. That's turning the argument on them, which is what I would have done, which is what 
um, this person uh, seems to be saying. Oh, let me give him credit really quick. I don't want to don't want to be rude. <clears throat> oh, this is Bill McGurn has written this article. It's a it's fine. I think yeah, like I said, there are a few things in there that I would not have um, raised myself. Points I would not have raised myself. Um, but overall, good article. And again, um, it's it's the whole thing is. Bloomberg should have made it a debate, not on his personal record as a CEO, but he should have turned it into a capitalism versus socialism, which I believe he would have won because one of them is an ideology which is compatible with American values and the other one is not. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Mize, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.